Hello and welcome to this session covering cell and gene therapy and how they need a tailored and integrated approach in order to achieve their full potential. My name is Narayanan. I'm head of the Complex Biologics Group at VCLS. I'll try and keep this session at fairly high level to ensure that those who are not highly knowledgeable can still understand the principles behind what drives these products to success and how to achieve such success. Many of these products are targeted at serious non-met medical needs and that includes various cancers, neurodegenerative diseases and cardiovascular diseases just to give a few examples. Roughly half of these products in development target oncology indications. However, despite their potential, they face several challenges in the development from beginning to end, which includes, of course, regulatory approval and reimbursement. Therefore, it's important to understand the complexity of the product and ensure that what the impact of the complexity is and how to resolve it to achieve success. To ensure, of course, these reach the patients who are in dire need of such innovative therapies. This session will aim to cover what's the right approach to take to ensure these products reach the patient successfully. What that means is it needs an integrated approach which covers all aspects of development starting from manufacturing right through to clinical application and beyond. Further, such an integrated approach involving all the experts will reduce the risk of failure and more likely to achieve success. One important difference between a conventional product like chemicals or small biologicals and cell and gene therapy is that it's important to have a target product profile from early on until it reaches the patient. This cannot be overemphasized as it's considered one of the best ways to provide the ATMP developers with a vision and focus during the entire development. An important part of TPPs to ensure that there's correlation between chemistry manufacturing, non-clinical and clinical development part. As many of you are aware, of course, one of the biggest challenges with this group of products is the CMC or quality as it's often referred to in Europe. These products are highly complex to make, which is further contributed to by the biological complexity of the product as compared to traditional medicines. Therefore, it's important to not to approach it in vacuum and ensure a thorough understanding of the effect on non-clinical and clinical data is understood early on to ensure any risk due to lack of understanding is minimized. It also means that one needs to learn from any non-clinical or clinical data available to ensure that the CMC matter is given proper importance and modified as required based on those kind of information. And any negative impact on CMC can have significant negative impact on non-clinical and of course the clinical use. The non-clinical development also poses many challenges as a formulaic approach that can be applied to a small molecule such as a rat or a mouse model and a large animal may or may not apply. So again, this needs to be tailored based on a proper understanding of the product and its biological effect. One important thing to consider is an early engagement with the regulatory authorities to ensure that the right non-clinical 
testing is done. It's particularly important to consider all possible modalities, including in vitro, ex vivo, uh, or in vivo models, and also humanized or homolog models, immunocompromised models, etc. While typically experiments like genotoxicity or carcinogenicity may not be necessary in every case, on a case by case basis, it may be necessary to consider, for example, tumorigenicity for gene therapy. When you move to the clinical part, again, there are many differences between conventional products and cell and gene therapies. To start with, a phase one healthy volunteer study often is not applicable for many reasons. Aspects such as safety and clinical pharmacology may not be relevant or useful. Further, it may pose a potential risk to healthy volunteers as the long-term effect of a gene therapy is unknown at this moment and the overall benefit of such trials may be highly limited anyway. What that means is, of course, we need to often go into patients with this added complexity. For example, any safety issue could be either due to the product or due to the disease or any concomitant medication. It'll be often a very difficult to interpret this. What that then requires is a, a thorough and clear understanding of the mode of action of the products and all potential effects, both in relation to efficacy and safety. During clinical development, one particular challenge these products pose is the dose selection. A conventional dose selection experiment with small number of patients may be misleading and could end up with choosing the wrong dose which is either not efficacious or possibly unsafe. Considering many of these products are administered once, there is little room for any risk. A dose selection based on no observed adverse effect level may be unhelpful at best and misleading at worst. If feasible, the concept of minimal anticipated biological effect level could be useful and may be considered. Also, it's important to be aware that long-term data on both efficacy and safety are required as part of the regulations. This is understandable as these products are given once with a view to working for a lifetime. However, there is flexibility available in providing part of this data as a post-approval commitment. Talking about reimbursement, this is one of the biggest challenges with these products currently. But of course, this is an evolving territory and with time we may learn more about how best to achieve it. One of the important contributors to the cost is the manufacturing of these products is much more complex. And also because they're given once in some cases with lifetime expected efficacy, then that reimbursement as a one-off can often be a challenge. A well-planned risk share agreements between developers and those responsible for reimbursement can be a possible solution to ensure that it reaches the patients who need them. So, how do we then go ahead with this? In conclusion, I would say make sure all the relevant experts are involved from early on 
to ensure that you take an integrated approach so that everyone understand the complexity and the impact on various aspects of development and they take a joined up approach in making sure the any risks are minimized and the potential for success is increased as i mentioned before target product profile is an important part of the development and would go a long way in helping achieve a successful outcome one way of approaching the development is to take what's called a risk based approach where a thorough understanding of the risk based on the product characteristics and the disease being treated is all put together to make the planning appropriate therefore identifying any potential risk very early is critically important i hope you found this brief presentation helpful in understanding how to develop this potentially curative products i am more than happy for you to throw any questions at me and look forward to hearing from them we at vcls will continue to help people developing these products as much as we can to ensure that these products reach the patient that need them desperately thank you for listening and i hope to hear from you bye for now take care